Good afternoon to our international viewers and thank you for joining us once again here at the Aura News broadcast for our daily English news edition. I'm Daniel Cook, your host, Monday through Saturday, bringing you a translated version of today's top news stories. A branch of a foreign company called GFI Albania, which is responsible for fuel marking at the customs points, has ceased its activities, causing serious problems in the country's fuel market. As a result of a conflict with the port authorities, they simply stopped their operations, but there has been no official declaration of what the conflict entailed. GFI Albania won the concession rights for fuel marking in 2011, and they began to perform this function in 2013. The concession was given for 10 years and carried a value of 15 million euro. This service does add to the cost of fuel in the market because importers have to pay an additional 10 lek per liter at customs for the fuel marking service. After listening to the widespread discontent, the government has withdrawn from its initial draft on social and health insurance contributions. The Vice Minister of Finance, Irena Betchirai, explained today that after giving heed to the concerns of the stakeholders, the Ministry of Finance has decided to reformulate the law and add some mitigating criteria. Speaking at the Economic Commission today, Betchirai announced that the contributions for social insurance will be based upon a set of criteria including the professions themselves, how long the private practice in question has been operating, the location of the business, and their level of income. The opposition have said that the law is unconstitutional since it would give the government the right to impose a new tax. The initial version of the law on social and health contributions mandated that private practices must pay social and health insurances based upon the maximum wage. They have now withdrawn from this version amid general outcry against it by the stakeholders. Various organizations that defend the rights of children, people with disabilities, and other vulnerable groups have raised the concern that services for the needy are not included in the budget for the Ministry of Social Welfare. According to Children's Human Rights Center of Albania, there are 100,000 children who live in extreme poverty, they have very little food and clothing and no access to education. The organization proposes that the ministry give out scholarships in the amount of $27 million and establish emergency centers for street children. The Association of the Blind says that the government has not subsidized them for 25 years. In addition, the labor unions demanded an increase of the minimum wage by 5% in 2016 and 20% in 2017. Moody's Investors Service of New York City has published a report today on the health of the Albanian government. According to, Moody's Albania, uh, according to Moody's, Albania's arrangement with the International Monetary Fund and the progress of its reforms have helped to counterbalance the deterioration of its fiscal strength. The assistant vice president of Moody's and the author of the report, Evan Woolman, had, had, he had this to say. While Albania's EU candidacy has fostered progress in tackling corruption and advancing reforms in the public sector, institutional convergence with EU standards remains protracted, and we expect the business environment to remain constrained. Moody's report, entitled The Government of Albania, says that the experts predict a debt, uh, that the debt will reach a maximum level in 2015 before declining in 2016. The report reads, Albania's key credit challenges hinge on its high debt ratio, which we expect to peak at over 73% in 2015, before declining to around 70% in 2016. Key credit also hinges on the country's sizable gross borrowing requirements, although ref uh, refinancing risks have been mitigated via the issuance of a second 450 million euro bond in November of 2015. Fiscal indicators deteriorated significantly during 2013, leading up to the parliamentary elections. Moody's also takes positive note of the Albanian government's work with multilateral institutions, such as the IMF and the World Bank. These agreements aim to improve the resilience of the country's domestic debt structure, which is constrained by a short average maturity and a high reliance on the domestic banking system, which is burdened by large volumes of non-performing loans. Moody's comments further that successful progress in reforms, specifically in tackling corruption, 
the strengthening of property rights and judicial efficiency would result in improved competitiveness and enhanced business attractiveness. On the other hand, a failure to stabilize the deficit and public debt ratio would undermine the country's stability. The NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg has arrived in Albania for his first visit. He was received by Prime Minister Eddie Rama today and after an initial meeting they gave a joint press conference from the Prime Minister's office. Mr. Stoltenberg made the following statement. No country is immune to the threat of terrorism. We must intensify our efforts in this fight using every means at our disposal, military, economic, political and diplomatic. Prime Minister Rama, who received praise from the Secretary General for his leadership in the fight against terrorism, responded that he is committed to fighting terrorism at every opportunity. We are committed to contributing in every way we can in every mission in which our contribution is requested, said Mr. Rama. The two leaders were in agreement concerning Albania's defense budget. Stoltenberg had this to say, I know the economic difficulties of, our, of your country. For this reason, I support your increase of the budget for defense. I encourage you to continue in this direction, he said. Prime Minister Rama spoke to Stoltenberg about Kosovo, commending its inclusion in NATO. He said, I expressed to the NATO Secretary General that Albania is grateful for the decision to accept Montenegro into, into NATO because the enlargement of this alliance is the enlargement of freedom, peace and democracy. We support the continuation of this process through the inclusion of other countries of the region. Albania hopes that the allied countries will take notice of Kosovo's alignment with NATO as soon as possible, said Prime Minister Rama. Later on, Stoltenberg met with President Buyar Nishani, Foreign Minister Dietmir Bushati, and the Minister of Defense Mimi Kodeli. The Democratic Party has launched what they call the Foundation for Freedom and Democracy, which aims to gather intellectuals to contribute to the consolidation of democratic governance. The chairman of the Democratic Party, Lulzim Basha, made the statement that democracy in Albania has regressed in the recent years. According to him, the only chance to, seek progre or to see progress is to unify the left-wing members with the right-wing members who share the vision of the Democrats against the government which Basha says is a gang without any ideology. He said, we are not against the chairman of the Socialist Party. We are not against the ideology of this party. We are against the mentality of a gang that is robbing the country. Basha commented again on the December 8th protest, saying that the violence to the Prime Minister's office and to the bunker was not part of the opposition's plan, but was rather a popular revolt against bad governance. The former Prime Minister Sali Barisha viewed the protest positively, saying that civil disobedience can save the country from evil, just like the students of 1990 did. Barisha declared that destroying the bunker was necessary because, according to him, it is a grave provocation of all those who suffered under communism. The, banker, uh, the bunker must disappear, he said. We cannot keep this bunker as a symbol because if we accept the bunker, we must also accept the statue of Anver Hoxha. The Assembly Speaker Ilir Meta has sent a letter to six of the parliamentary parties asking them to begin work on the electoral reform by setting up an ad hoc committee. He wrote that the reform needs to be transparent, comprehensive and needs to reflect the OSCE ODIHR recommendations. The following is an excerpt from the letter. Based on the recommendations of the recent report by the OSCE ODIHR on the 2013 parliamentary elections and 2015 local elections, and also based on the best parliamentary practice for the preparation of amendments to the electoral legislation, I would ask you to express your will to begin this process in Albanian Parliament. The Assembly Speaker asked the parties not to lose any time in setting up an ad hoc committee with members from both the majority and the opposition. According to Mr. Meta, preparing the amendments in a timely manner is the way to ensure that the next elections are held according to international standards. His request was immediately supported by the Democratic Party. Eddie Paloka responded in agreement that the electoral reform needs to address all of the OSCE ODIHR recommendations. He declared that a new electoral code is necessary in order to establish a truly free vote. The head of the Democratic Parliamentary Group added that his party will review Meta's request. 
Gramoz Ruchi, the head of the Socialist Parliamentary Group, says that he has not yet received the letter. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our edition for this evening. Please tune in tomorrow at the same time for more news in English. Thanks, and have a good night.